Hi, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an Olympic medals table using Excel on the Mac. The data will be pulled in from a website, and when the website gets updated, all it takes is a couple of clicks, and the spreadsheet gets updated too. Now, before you think, I don't want or need to create a medals table. If you take the concepts and principles that I show you, importing data from a table on a web page, writing a little bit of M code to overcome one of the limitations of Excel for Mac, and using Power Query to clean up the imported data, hopefully you'll find it a useful learning experience, as well as a fun video. The first challenge was trying to find a website that was compatible with Excel. I thought I'd use Olympics.com, the official Olympics website, but that wouldn't work. Excel on the Mac generated an error, and when I tested the same site on Excel for Windows to make sure it wasn't a Mac issue, it just failed to connect to the website. So I ended up using the BBC site. I put a link in the video description below for anyone who wants to try this out. Importing data from a web page on the Mac is a little different than doing it on Windows. Power Query on the Mac doesn't include a From Web option. You need a plain text file containing the URL to the page, and you need to save that file with an IQI extension. If you're following along, I've created the IQI file for you, and you can download it from a link in the video description. In Excel, start a new file and click on Data. Now, it's the Data tab on the main menu at the top, not the one on the ribbon. Then click on Get Data and click on Run Web Query. Go and find the IQY file, which in my case is on my desktop. Select it and click Get Data. Then choose where you want the file to go. I'm going to put it onto A1 on the existing sheet and click import. The data is loaded in, but unlike on Windows, the import process doesn't create a table. But what it does create is a named range. So if I go to the formulas tab on the ribbon and I click on name manager, it creates a name called Olympics, which is taken from the name of the IQY file. And you can see that refers to A1 to F206 on sheet one, and that's where the data is. So I'll just close that. The data that has been imported isn't in the right format. It needs cleaning up. Two problems we've got. We've got the problem with the countries, and we've got the problem with the column headings. There seem to be extra characters in there. I think those characters are coming from the alt text of the images that are on the web page. So to clean up the data, I can use Power Query. If you're familiar with Power Query on Windows, Power Query on the Mac doesn't include the From Table or Range option. I'm going to go to the Data tab on the ribbon and click on Get Data Power Query, and then select Blank Query. I then need to replace the double quotes on row two with Excel.CurrentWorkbook and type an open bracket, and it puts the close bracket in. Excel.CurrentWorkbook is the M code for the current file, M being the language of the query editor. Because M is a case-sensitive language, make sure you type it with a capital E, a capital C, and a capital W. The rest of the characters are lowercase. So once you've done that, click Next. In the table that's generated, there is one row. I'm just going to make those column headings a little bit wider so you can see them. Notice that in the content column, we have an entry called table and the name is sheet one exclamation mark Olympics. Sheet one being where the data is in the spreadsheet, Olympics being the name of the range as I showed you before. If I click on the word table, it will show me the actual data. I'll just make these column headings a little bit wider. And we can see the first problem is we've got extra characters in the column headings. So I'm just going to change those by double clicking on G gold. I can remove the first G, press enter. It does reset the column widths 
when you edit the column names. So I'll double click on silver, remove the extra S, double click on bronze, remove the extra B, and double click on total and remove the extra word total. It doesn't matter that the column widths are not uh, correct at this point. The other problem is the country column. In addition to the name of the country, each entry has a three character or two character code in uppercase. I think that is the alt text for each of the flag images from the web page. But whatever it is, it needs removing. But because there's no consistency with the data, some of these codes are two characters and some are three characters, there's no simple way to fix the problem. I have come up with a way. It took multiple steps, but let me show you. I'll select the country column and then in the query editor, select transform split column by uppercase to lowercase. And what that is going to do is going to go through the country column and every time it sees an uppercase character followed by a lowercase character, it's going to create a new column. So there we go. You can see if again, if I just widen these columns to show you the column headings, column names, you can see that every time it switches from an uppercase character to a lowercase character, it has created a new column. Why it's created a column four, which I think looking at it, yeah, it's, it's totally empty. There's a whole bunch of nulls in there. I don't know, but I'll, I'll actually delete country four. We don't need that column. So I'll click on the heading country four, go up to the home tab on the ribbon and click remove columns. And that column has now gone. So let's now focus on the other three columns. What I need to do now is I need to connect together country two and country three with the last character of country one. So if I click on the heading for country two, hold the command key down on the keyboard and click on country three, that has selected those two columns in that order, country two, country three. With those two columns selected, I'll click on transform merge columns. I'll leave the column name as merged and click OK. So we now have a new column called merged, which has combined those two columns together. Then I'll click on country column one and I want to extract or keep the last character of every one of those entries. And ultimately that will then be combined with the merged column. So it's one step at a time. Let's deal with pulling out just the last character by going to transform, extract, last characters, typing in a one and click OK. So that has extracted or kept, retained, whatever you want to say, the last character of each entry in that column. Then finally, I want to merge those two columns together. So I select country one, which actually is already selected hold the command key down and click on merged. So I've got the two columns selected and then click on transform merge columns. And I'll change the name here to country and click OK. So that was quite a few steps to get the data how we wanted it. If there's anyone watching this video who can do it in fewer steps, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to see if anybody comes up with a better solution. But now I've tidied my data up. I've got my data how I want it. I'm going to close the query editor by going up to the home tab and clicking on close and load. Unlike Excel on Windows, close and load on the Mac will always create a new sheet. So I now I've got two sheets. The query sheet is like the after and sheet one is the before. If you rename sheet one, I don't suggest you do it, but if you do, you'll have to go back into the query and edit the query because remember the query references sheet one in the data source. But what you can do is you can hide sheet one if you want to. And that way we are only focusing on the after data. Now the page on the BBC website has each country's flag in a column within the table. 
To do that here, I'm going to insert a new column just to the left of country. And I'll just change the column name to flag, although it doesn't matter what you call that column, and then select all of the country names. And with all the country names selected, I'm going to click on data and click on geography. Traditionally, an Excel cell can store a number, a date, a formula or text. And each of those things is known as a data type. A few years ago, Microsoft added a few other data types. If you're not familiar with the geography data type, I made a video on that last year and I put a link in the description below. By doing what I've just done, I've converted each of the items in column C from being a text data type to being a geography data type that has its own properties. So if I now click in B2, type an equal sign because I'm entering a formula, type C2, I get a list popping up. And this is a list of all the properties of the country. I'm going to choose image and press enter. And what it does is it generates the image of each country. That's not pulling it from the web page. That is generated from Excel itself by picking up a property from the country name. So let's imagine that the web page has updated. All I have to do is click data refresh all. What that does is updates the data on sheet one, even if sheet one is hidden. And once the data on sheet one is updated, that should update this data here. However, it hasn't. So I need to click data refresh all again. On Excel for Windows, you can solve the having to click refresh all again by going into the queries properties and disabling background refresh. But that doesn't seem to work on the Mac. So I can either stick with clicking refresh all twice, which is no hardship as long as I remember to do it, or I could create a macro that automates clicking refresh twice. And creating a macro is outside the scope of this video. You'll also notice that the column with the flags is broken. If you look at the column with the country names, the countries are no longer geographic data types. The little symbol to the left of each country has disappeared. They've gone back to being plain text. This is an issue with Power Query on both Windows and Mac. When you refresh, the query re-imports the data from the original source, in this case, the web page, and resets the data types to the original imported format. So I think I will remove the flags column. Nice idea, but it's not working. I could, I guess, write a macro to automate converting the country names to geographic data type, but I'll leave it, I think. But that's it. My medals table is complete. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.